Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on the Mike and Mike Premier Business Radio Program. I'm your host, Mike King. I appreciate you being here with me. The views expressed here are mine have no connection to support of agreement with any of the hosts, information ads on the station. I don't work for the station. My program is there here on a daily basis. You can follow me on the, all social platforms as one of Mike and Mike RV as well as Mike King Biz. So we're coming to you from the fabulous Hilton down here downtown. So if you ever need hotel space, event space, or uh, you need rooms, make sure you contact your good friends here. They will take care of you. That's what they do here. Uh, Alrighty, so we are the business radio program in the area. I'm your host, Mike King. So a uh, good friend, Shelby Brown, says that there's a man in the community I need to talk to. Sir, you are a renaissance man. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a chemist, which which kind of got me in Calgary. But, you know, we had the... We made us, you know, perk up a little bit. Your community advocate, you are an artist, and you're just gifted straight up. That's what the shirt says. That's right. All righty, so tell us what you are and what you're doing. You're going to have to speak up a little bit. I need to get that soft voice going on. All right, thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate oh, thank it. You. Now you didn't break out. We didn't break out the radio. I got my, my preacher voice back. Now. That's it. All right, yes, yes, thank you so much for having me. Yes, my name is Pami Achampo. The last name is Achampo. It's an African Ach- name. Yes, it is. Yes, I was born in West Africa, Ghana, moved to the United States about 20 years ago to join my family. And I went to school in uh, City College, New York, where I graduated with a chemistry degree. So I'm a chemist by profession. You're a chemist by profession. What was it that, that drew you to chemistry? Uh, interestingly, back home in Africa, in high school, you pick your major before you actually start the high school. Okay. So a lot of us didn't know what we mean, what it meant, but the girls like science students. So we... <laughs> so wait a second, in Africa, the girls like... Science, science students, yeah. So the science, you're supposed to be the smartest. Shout out to the nerds. <laughs> See, I knew it was a time it was going to come around and it was going to be good. <laughs> the, the girls like science. Okay, man. I, yes. so right. I, would, I would think that the line for the science class was long. But you have to get straight A's to get in. So oh. if you don't, from junior high, we take a, uh, international, I mean, national exams and based on how you score, then if you go to high school, you get to do the science. So I got a well, 12 subjects. I get 10 A's and two B's. So the science class had to get me in. So I didn't know what I was doing, but science helped out. So when I came to the United States, I had, that's all I knew. So when I went to college, I just did chemistry. Okay, so uh, inquiring minds want to know, this is an investigative journalism <laughs> radio show. Did it work to captivate the ladies? I guess my looks did it more than my science. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the man is wearing a gifted shirt, so he's telling what time it is. So not only is he good looking, he says, I got I got the credentials to go with. It. All right, so um, you're, 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 you're a chemist. That's well. right. All right, and we talked about some of the other things that you do. Let's let's touch on some of those. Yes, so uh, that is what, that is what I've been doing, and then I work as a community leader and also work as a pastor for a local church in New York City in the Bronx called Calvary Charismatic Center. And so I got a scholarship to go to Singapore to study community support programs. And so the one I did in 2012 was the mental health, emotional health, and all kinds of family support courses. So when I got back from Singapore, I said, this is important. So then I relocated from New York City to Richmond, Virginia area. What was the draw to Richmond? Like, how did you make that connection? That's also a funny story. My wife and I, we didn't know anything about Virginia, but for some reason, we said when we get married, we will come to the city where lovers are. So we just relocated here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we got Jeff Logan in the house right here with us. So Jeff, the man said he didn't know anything about Virginia, but he the, the slogan got you guys. Yeah, ex- love. Exactly. Yeah. So we just really get it here. <laughs> so whatever the person is who came up with that slogan, it worked. It's working, yes. <laughs> it's working. Okay, yes. so but now Virginia's a big place. Right. How did you zero in on Richmond? Exactly. So I applied for a chemistry job, and there's a company in the city called PPD, Prada Pharmaceutical. So they gave me an offer as a senior scientist. So they re- they relocated me to okay. the, the city, and that's how. I ended up here. Okay, so you're you're out there doing your work. What taught Shelby Brown? I shout out to good friend over at WTV, Shelby Brown. Oh, uh, what caught her attention? Yes. Yeah, so when we launched the nonprofit organization that I started in Richmond, our office is not too far from here. We are called Gifted NGO, and so we launched out 
our first emotional wellness courses and it was on Eventbrite. So people will sign up and every Saturday they will come for class and then we will help them one-on-one -on -one and also as a group. And so How long ago was that? We started about two years ago. Okay. Yes. And so Shelby picked that on Eventbrite and sent me an email and said, I would like to talk to the person who is organizing this program. So we spoke over the phone and then Channel 6 News came to the center and did an interview. And then right after that, Shelby said, you have to speak to Mike. So that's how it ended up. All right. So when, when you look at, let's talk about wellness and, and all that. What's the mindset of young people today as we're coming out of the pandemic? Yes. So it's amazing that I even did not have the pandemic in mind, but it kind of became a necessary thing. When I, because I lunched before, I did a, like a small group lunch before the pandemic started. And I was so glad I did it because as soon as I did, then I realized that this is the most important thing at this point in time. So a lot of young people that I, I started the program with, they're like, this is what I really need. We can afford the cost when we get to physical therapy or when we get to Abby, to speak to a counselor, it costs so much. So I came up with the idea of the fact that it's a free program and then we have all of this to give they were on it like, and I was shocked the level of anxiety, the level of depression, the level of kind of societal uh, tendencies that these young people were dealing with. And so it was a really a help when we launched it and they all came around and every Saturday people signed up for us to talk about these things. So I'm glad I did it when I did it and it came right on time for a lot of people that were going through a lot of things during the pandemic. One of the great parts about <clears throat> traveling and living in different parts of the world. Let's talk about some of the similarities between here, Singapore, and Ghana. Beautiful. And then, what are some of the differences? So what, what sticks out in your mind as something similar that people wouldn't think of here in, say, Singapore? Singapore is a clean country, literally. I don't know, they keep the city so clean. And I've, I asked them why, and they said that it's a very small country. You can drive through the country in 30 minutes, the whole country. Oh, really? It's a pretty small country. So you don't have a lot to kind of bring the economy up. So they literally decorate the country to get attraction. So he, they clean it up just to polish the country. So people will come in, that's how they get money. So they've, they've made an amazing uh, infrastructure change in the country. So it's just a pretty country. Okay, what's, some of the, what's something that people would be shocked that it would sort of be a downside? Uh, it was a downside for me, but it was a wake up thing for me because the population is about 80% Chinese, but they all speak English, right? So with my mindset, when I looked at a Chinese kid, I want him to be Lee. But when you do this, they say, my name is Michael. I'm like, how can you be Michael? <laughs> so, I, I, I've had that. I've heard that before when a person said, Come <laughs> and they said, you know, you that's one of the biases where we think that the person name should be something else. Right. And it's not. Exactly. So because they were they were a British colony, so they also speak English. And and then guess what? We had gone to the school with other Africans, right? And so after I saw his face and he didn't look Michael, but it's Michael, then it dawned on me that my friend is from Africa, he's called Maxwell. So it's the same thing, but because I'm used to it. Exactly. But I'm used to that because I thought it was like normal. Not <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I realized that I couldn't talk bad about the Chinese person I'm speaking to because I also have a Michael who is African. So the, 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 the Europeans did a good number on us. So we, That's true. we so, think uh, that we always talk about your nonprofit. What is it that your nonprofit, nonprofits always need help? That's right. What are some of the things that you guys need help with? Thank you so much. So mainly we need a lot of financial sponsorship and volunteers. Yeah, so we have, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to share our yes, online okay. content. So, I mean, our online address. This is the program. We put everything out there. Beautiful. So uh, to help us out, you can donate at www.giftedngo.info. Okay. There's a link there that you can donate to us. And if you, at uh, the same website, if you want to sign up to take a class, you can do it. If you want to sign up to volunteer, you can also do that. All right, so, uh, so what age groups do you help with the program? Uh, so we're looking at teenagers all the way up. Teenagers. Right. All right, uh, one last time. We'd like to thank, come on, how do you say your last name again? Achampo. Achampo. I got it. Okay, so Kwame Achampo. Yes, sir. And it is gifted. 
Thank right, you. So, so you you are an artist as well. Yes, sir. You can sing. I try. I do reggae songs so that I don't have to uh, do the highs and lows. <laughs> uh, sir, you don't understand when a person comes here and they tell us they can do things. I agree. Remember, we had the guy who said he was a, the Belize dancer. We, we put people on the spot. Can you can you sing us a little something? Uh, a little something. Yeah, a little something. I'll try. I'll try. What 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 what, what do you want me to sing? You um, know, sir, the platform is yours. Okay, I, so just, as a preacher, I think my people right, might yes, want me yes. to sing something. So, amen. Zin grace, how sweet the sound that say a wretch like me. Like I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what we do here. All right. We, we bring folks up. You know, when you started with that, when I thought about Barack Obama. <laughs> exactly. I, he did that. He did that. He did that. I thought about Barack Obama when he was doing that. So we'd like to thank you for coming on the program. Awesome. You are a friend of the program. Come on. You got something else? Yes, quickly. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, yeah thank you. So um, I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much. But I want to just bring something critical out, which is anywhere I get opportunity to speak, I talk about this awareness called emotional homelessness. Whoa. Okay. Right. That's a new one. We, we were looking, all right, so talk to us about that. Yeah, so emotional homelessness is a, a global problem where one out of four people complain of constant loneliness and unhappiness. Constant loneliness and unhappiness. And you would think that that one out of four, which is about 25% of the red yes. population, you would think that it will be a single person who is not financially well. By a cut across, people who are married are complaining, people who are rich are complaining so it's a big problem that we bring awareness to and our organization we figured out a simple solution so every time i get up to speak i want to throw it out to people the social media cannot fix the problem uh, netflix cannot fix the problem youtube cannot fix the problem facebook cannot fix the problem it is not an online issue and the simple task is only two things i always announce for people to do the first thing is that the solution to this homelessness on the emotion side can be solved by another human. I philosophically have an argument that if I look at myself and I notice that my eyes cannot see me without the help of a mirror, I can see myself unless I use a mirror. That should tell me that the person who designed me did not design me for myself. Mm. I'm supposed to house somebody else and somebody's supposed to house me. So if we understand that we are human home for one another, then we kill that emotional homelessness. So everyone must hear me out that you, as you're sitting down, your primary purpose is to be a house for somebody else. And once you get that truth, it means that your job is to learn how to make people feel at home around you. It can be just two minutes or three minutes, but you have to understand that if I don't do that to the person, he will be missing something on the inside and he wouldn't even know what it is. There you go. We got to come back in touch with that one once again. Yes, sir. Because that one right there, yeah, I've never heard it put like that before. So a Kwame Achampo. Yes, sir. There you go. And the name of the nonprofit once again is? Gifted NGO. Gifted NGO. On the mic, we are the best business radio program around. We'll be back in just a moment.